All right, everybody, we are back again. Tuki here, joined alongside Mr. Sin for the win as we continue to uh, be here alongside you for our coverage of the ECL Elite Division playoffs. Of course, it is quarterfinals week. And Sin, what a start to the playoffs here. I mean, goodness gracious, uh, the twists and the turns. This has been absolutely incredible the good thing is of course we do know that there will be games tomorrow again there will be a mm -hmm. thursday broadcast we entered play today thinking hey maybe not we could have four first round sweeps that has not been the case of course as we just witnessed uh the two seed in sawo of course they're taking on granite gaming and granite had a three to nothing series lead sawo of course winning that last game that we brought to you here on broadcast and uh, Sin, I do believe we have a look towards uh, the the bracket, the standings, the updated one, if I'm not mistaken. And if we don't, we'll throw it to you in a minute. There we go. Uh, so again, that granite lead is there. And off broadcast, of course, we we don't have the ability to cover everything. We were actually going to try to bring it to you, and then bam, the overtime winner happened. IQ found themselves in the same exact situation as Sawa. They just won game four in overtime. So, Sin, at the very least, we know we'll have coverage of two different games tomorrow. That's all we know for now, though. It really does depend on what happens here and what Havu can do against their fiercest rivals. Yeah, and it's it's going to be a tough, tough matchup. I mean, this for Lunda Havu matchup, it, there's so much history there. There's so much competition there that, I mean, there, there's really no way to predict this. And with, you know, the new rendition of NHL and kind of, you know, the, the sort of struggles Havu has had in the recent uh, history, you know, obviously not making the finals. I guess that's a struggle for Havu, obviously, when we don't see them in the finals. You know, that's kind of how Havu has been living life. You know, we expect them to sort of be a finals contender. And, you know, now with the sixth seed here, they are seemingly trending downwards and down to nothing in this series as well. It kind of, you know, feeds that narrative all the more often. So it's going to be up to them if they want to shift that narrative. They got to have a big, big couple games here, be able to take it to uh, Ferlunda because finding yourselves in a hole against a team like Ferlunda, never an easy, easy task to, to go up against. I don't care who you are. Absolutely. Again, these two, uh, we have talked about it. It used to be a perennial finals matchup, yet somehow, some way, the league has changed enough that this is now an opening round matchup. Let's get you guys a look at the team stats here, the comparisons that we have to the first two games of the series, where, again, uh, it has been a very, very strong start for Forlunda through the opening two games. So. Yeah, five goals for two against, and... Uh, it's it, kind of exactly how you want to see it. Now they were, okay, uh, well, we'll kind of say, you know, during the regular season, they were not exactly where we expect them to be. They had the fourth most goals for and the the fifth uh, least goals against. And, you know, that's not the standard that Ferlunda really sets for themselves. But here they are taking on another one of those well-expected top teams in Havu. And they're taking it to them so far. Havu just managing those two goals for. They got to be able to find the offense here or this series could be over quickly. Absolutely, and again, a look here as well as we uh, get a look at the lineups. A reminder, uh, regular season, the meeting between these two it was on the final match day of the season as Forlunda took uh, both games, 2-1 to one and then 3-1 to one in that uh, regular season finale. So they are undefeated so far against Havu this season. Havu need to figure something out. But this, of course, are the, or these, of course, are the lineups here for this particular matchup. Again, for Havu Gaming, it is Wiegelson, Dominointi, and Captain Flyer Kungen, Nasser Stelia, Villicun, and of course, it will be Hanselino between the pipes once more, uh, admittedly. Not going to speculate as to what it is. I don't know if it's an availability issue or what it might be. But, of course, in the past, we have seen them go uh, with the split format between Hanselino and Sibelius. Not so much here on this one. Again, not uh, bringing it up to stir any controversy, you know. But, uh, regardless, Havu won against us 4-1 to one in the regular season. Did they, Did they, though? Did they, Cape? You blame the website. You blame the website that has it misreported then. Uh, for, for the lineup, of course, Kape between the pipes uh, for Forlunda. But the team in front of a playmaker, Potslav, and Eki, Temu, and Loimu on defense. Sin, we'll get a look at that center comp here. Dominoiti and Potslav, we have talked about these two uh, to death in terms of this head-to-head -head rivalry. Right now, though, in this series so far, Potslav's gotten the better of them. Yeah, he absolutely has. He's got the got the two assists. Obviously, the faceoff battle is going to Dominoiti, but Dominoiti has not found a point uh, just yet, and that's not something that we're used to out of Dominoiti. And in this matchup, they seemingly, uh, you know, 
struggling right now so far at least to be able to get onto the board and that's you know big credit to Fralunda who you know again will kind of have to bring it up self-admittedly they've had a rougher time adjusting to NHL 22 than they were expecting but again as we saw with Granite what a time to sort of put all the pieces together than here in the playoffs so far so good Indeed. And again, obviously so much to uh, to break down and dissect about this individual, uh, you know, matchup here, every matchup that we have, especially as we move towards the winger battle here, uh, which again, it's 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 kind of crazy to see how this is how this has played out, because again, Sam, we've made that comparison before between these two clubs, you know, uh, irresistible force, a movable object, all the cliches in the world. Uh, but as we have Wiggleson and Flyer Kugan against Playmaker and Eki, I mean, again, Eki has had such a strong start to the series. Uh, more so as well, uh, the impressive performance uh, from, you know, Eki, who was just fresh off of getting back from Florida. Didn't really have too much time to kind of settle in before having to play these highly competitive games. I mean, the man is a machine. You think jet lag is going to affect someone like Eki? Think again. I mean, four points in two games played. Really kind of picking up where he left off in that regular season. On the flip side, the Weagleson, you know, and Flyer Kungan, both with two points in two games played, which is a decent, you know, decent place to be in. And I still really like this new uh, winger composition for Havu. I mean, I always talked about how just how good, scary good Flyer Kungan is when he's pressuring puck carries on that forecheck, he kind of runs on almost, you know, one man forecheck with the way Habu likes to play defense, those layers in defense. And it's, you know, often been Flyer Coogan pressuring with that amazing defensive skill stick that he has. Weagleson brings a very similar skill set to the table. Now they haven't really been able to, you know, force those turnovers enough on Fralunda. So maybe they're going to look to crank up a bit more aggression on that forecheck. Yeah, you might give up some of those comfortable layers in defense, but for Lunda, being what they are, still find a way to score. I mean, Playmaker, Eki, what a forward combination that is. And a, a, a formal apology I would like to issue to the form of uh, Kape. I was a little bit sassy, and as it turned out, the new sort feature on the website, which is fantastic, by the way, and I love it, and it's great, uh, did not apply. Indeed, it was a 1-1 split between Havu and for Lunda in the regular season. So Havu, now I, I do believe... Uh, three, uh, three and uh, three and one record for Fralunda against Habu. I can math well. Same with that, we move over to the defensive battle. <laughs> oh goodness, we move over to the defensive battle. Hey, this is this is day three in a row. We still got tomorrow to go. It's been a long season. This defensive battle, though, sin uh, perhaps the most intriguing of any defensive battle that we have in these quarterfinal matchups because these are four of the best. I think it's signified by the fact that all four have a point in just the two games that we've played so far this season. Yep, and Fernando's going to have to be careful of Vilikun. He had, what was it, 11 goals in the regular season. My, my brain wanted to say nine. No, even more than that. He had 11 goals, which tied him for the first amongst defensemen. He's a defenseman who has a Howard service shot. He loves, loves to creep in into that sort of a uh, higher slot with the one-time option. When the puck is on that left-hand side of the ice, he will creep in there. And he honestly goes lower and more to the left than any other defenseman that I've seen. And that gives him a ridiculous advantage on that. That being said, obviously Loimu and Temu, incredible defensive pairing. And, you know, they've got a couple points each, but they, they, just like you know, Nasuseli and Vilikun, they play so well together. It could really be either one out, either one of them out there breaking plays up and you know making things happen on the offensive side of the puck. The goaltending battle, of course, the last one that we have here. Of course, it is Han Salino and Cape and I and sent Cape the sub eighty percent save percentage on the season. Very much unsurprising. He's dead on the money now at eighty percent through two games. Anselino, though, not quite where he was wanting to be. But as we saw on Monday's cast, there were some tough breaks for him in goal where there just simply wasn't too much a goalie could do other than just kind of shrug his shoulders. Yeah, and that's kind of the uh, the catch-22 when it comes to a, a good goaltender on one of these elite teams is oftentimes you're not going to see a whole heck of a lot of shots. Your team in front of you is way too good. Sometimes the ones that sneak through are the ones that are in those higher percentages, you know, the, the breakaways, the, the odd man rushes, those. And it's kind of tough to get in the groove if perhaps you haven't faced a whole lot of opportunities. But Hans Salino is an incredibly capable goaltender, incredibly capable all-around player, but in net, he's great. And he, I think 
earned that crease with his play throughout the course of the regular season. They split time, he and Sibelius, but he's quite clearly gotten the nod here. They want to go with the solo goaltender instead of switching back and forth. And, you know, Habu trusts him. He's been he's been the guy for them for, you know, a, a long, long while. And it's, you know, he's going to have to maybe come up with a, a couple big saves here and there, but that's what uh, he can do. And that's what Habu is going to need him to do to get back in this series. So again, we are just a few moments away from puck drop game number three in this best of seven. Again, as you see below us, a two to nothing series lead for for Lunda, who, of course, are looking to make their way back to the championship round after falling short last year. And of course, Havu have been there in the past. These two teams have met in the finals, as we've mentioned uh, quite a few times in yeah. the past and since so as we get ready for the matchup of course we want to throw it over to some of the regular season numbers here as well to just emphasize how talented these these two teams are and how almost evenly matched they are because i mean again look at these numbers it was incredibly close yet somehow this was the battle between three and six yeah i mean it was it was a, a hectic race at the end of the season to figure out how the seeding was going to work and how those relegation positions were going to work. It, it really did, for a lot of cases, come down to the final day of the season. In that last week, we had, you know, leapfrogs happening seemingly left and right, or at least the possibility of them. But to your point, how even these two teams are matched, I mean, it doesn't get much more even when you look at that goal differential between the pairing. And actually, Havu uh, had the better the better uh, goal differential as well, but the advantage on the special teams went to for Lunda, so it's again. This is it. It is. This is the cl This is the closest matchup. This is this is why we had El Clasico for so so long. Both these teams extraordinarily capable and very very good. Right now, for Lunda has that two zero lead, but don't be surprised to see how we begin to scratch claw and, and really really fight to get back into this series. So again, one more time, just a, a few moments away from puck drop game number three. Sin, I mean, in our first matchup, we saw it, of course, Granite able to get the win in a back-and-forth Game 3 to really put the pressure on. Now, Sabo did win Game 4, but again, they still have to win three consecutive games tomorrow against Granite. Havu are well aware. I mean, again, we have seen the situation of a major comeback between these two teams in a final before. It's possible, but certainly you do not want, if you are Havu, to be entering tomorrow in need of three straight wins you certainly don't want your season to end yeah. here tonight i'm intrigued to see just kind of what we're going to see from them in this particular matchup because you've pointed it out all season long they used to be a team that had their strategy stuck to their guns no matter what whether it was working or not just to try and break down the team but this season they have shown that little bit more of a willingness to adapt so it makes me wonder again just what are we going to see from them yeah i think that they were forced to adapt and and it's a good thing they did because had they not adapted i'm not too sure if we see them in the playoffs and it, it's tough to say but sometimes your strategy over time with a new game with a new meta sort of developing it simply isn't isn't there anymore they had to sort of begin to implement the dump and chase which they used to great effect there were a lot of times where they got those cross corner dump and chases fire kungan battles for the puck gets it down low and they score off it because if you recall that down low cycle from havu was scary it still is scary and to get to that point they had to kind of figure out other methods of attack and i like that a lot from havu i think that gives them a good chance of getting back in the series last season if they're in this situation i would have to argue they don't get back into it this season with the way that they're playing with the way they're willing to ch sort of change things up and throw new looks at the other opponent definite possibility here for lunda gonna have to be on their game and play for all 60 minutes as they usually do so again, a friendly reminder of the situation here for the postseason. Again, uh, you know, we've had some of the action have to take place off broadcast. We can only cover so much at one time. So on broadcast, we did miss the end of the H-Reds and Goons series that wrapped up yesterday. Again, H-Reds with the sweep. And of course, earlier today, you had Feriastad taking on IQ. And Sin, you get a look at some of the numbers there. Of course, this was a uh, bad situation for IQ. Down three to nothing. But as you see there, they were able to get the three to two overtime victory in game number four that allows them to uh, be in action tomorrow. And of course, uh, tomorrow already proving to be a hectic day without knowing whether or not uh, Frolunda and uh, Erhavu, if they'll be in action as well. Yeah, and that's that's a big, big win for IQ. They did so good in the regular season. In fact, they were projected to be a bubble team 
and they got that four seed and they were not uh not hesitant about uh about shoving that back into the, some of the doubters faces uh on on social media but you know here they're taking on a Feriestad team who can who just make a living out of punishing teams uh we saw it, you know, a few years ago uh, in that Yippie Voskala series. And in that game, I mean, look how close it was. Despite, ha- you know, IQ having that advantage, Fedistad always has that counterattack ability out of nowhere, those slap passes. So it's going to be a tough road back for IQ. It's tough that they found themselves in that situation. But that first win, if you want to make a comeback, you need to get that first win. So again, we are waiting for the two teams to match up. You get a look, though, at the recent results here through the post season again the first four games of our other three series already in the books a lot of pressure on Havu heading into this matchup and whether or not you know we uh, have that situation of the emergence right of H Reds uh, the big two the big three the big four Mm -hmm. Havu loses this series you do have to wonder just where their placement is amongst the, the bigger teams at this stage I mean it's it's tough, uh, you know. Competitive sixes. It's really a what have you done for me? You know, what have you done for me lately? Type of thing. Yeah, and esports in general, it's just, everything changes so so quickly, and there's always someone looking to take your spot, whether they're a younger team, whether they're a younger player. We see it constantly. How many young guns, you know, coming in the league? You can think of, you know. Uh, Nikki Dangles almost as more of a veteran presence, whereas a couple years ago he was the rookie of the year. But there's just so many, you know, newer kind of faces making their way into here. It's a quick, quick turnover uh, situation. You have to fight at all times to maintain your spot here. And yeah, it's hard to kind of argue with that narrative sort of, uh, you know, with Havu beginning to, you know, sort of. I mean, it's hard to say after last season when they get kicked out in the semifinals, but, you know, getting the sixth seed here, if they get eliminated in that first round, I'd say that narrative definitely starting to shift to, you know, are they going to be able to uh, to to maintain their your, their position as one of those uh, top teams? Again, as you see on your screen there, of course, we normally try to cover our pro division matchups as well. But again, it's been a very busy week for the elite division as Sin and I have been here to cover for you. Of course, B Major was on the call yesterday as well. Again, an updated look at the pro division bracket as well. Sportsgamer.gg, the place to follow along with everything going on with the ECL. Of course, not just the elite division, but Sin, there we go. The teams are in the lobby again. Elite edges aplenty. In this particular matchup, very, very intrigued to see how this one goes because, again, uh, we know at times, you know, pressure can make diamonds, and especially with these two teams, uh, they might, they might very well be at their best when they are in high pressure situations. I think we've seen both of these teams at times yes. kind of play down to uh, their competition level at times and maybe not be uh, playing to 100% of their capabilities these two clubs forced each other to play at their yeah. very best. And none of, yeah, we've also seen these two teams have pretty crazy comebacks for Lunda won a championship after being down three games to one. I think there was a situation where I think it was, may have been for Lunda on top three games to none. Havu came back forced to game seven, I think, but unfortunately lost. I might have that backwards, but either way it, you know, this, uh, it's crazy, crazier things have happened here. And I'm actually noticed something. Playmaker now rocking a Playmaker as well. It used to be Potsloff and Eki rocking a Playmaker build. Playmaker is now rocking that as well. I'm not too sure when that change was made. Um, but it seems to be working for, for, for Linda so far in the playoffs. I mean, again, it's always an interesting question, too, whether or not someone changes up their, uh, you know, their player type after the first two games of a series. Mm -hmm. Is it worth adapting or do you just stick with what worked? We are about to find out. It is game number three between Havu and Fralunda. Again, Havu trailing two games to zero in this series and in desperate need of a comeback. Let's see what they can do as Dominoiti is able to gain the zone after that pass, but it's poked away. Good interception by Flyer Kungan, who tried to throw one on. Goes to the wayside. Here comes Playmaker. Creative work to get that pass. Potsloff able to win possession back. Eki down low. Golden Helmet is team's leading scorer. Keep an eye out on him. Playmaker in the corner. Goes back to Tamu at the point. And right back down into the corner and behind the back of the net. Let's see what Eki can do. Holding on to it. Tries to go back to the point and just held by Loimu. Gets it to Potsloff. He turns straight into the pressure, though. Now it's Habu. They send things going down the other way. And again, nowhere to go on their first couple of break-in attempts. 
Behind the net, Itzaki looking to cut back short side. He got it to the goal line, but Hans Zellini was able to find it. He was sort of uh, sort of threatening with that bit of L-skating right there a little bit earlier when he had that puck behind the net, and that's a little scary right there. Sort of comes out as a chance to sneak it by Hans Zellino. Chance there to the wayside. Havu in possession. See what they can do. Wiggleson with a big head of steam. That shot to the far side just wide. I like it, though. It's a good attempt. Something different, uh, which is really when you have two teams that are this familiar with one another, something that you have to do. You just got to try different looks. Hot slot now for Playmaker. There you go. He throws one on. That rebound handled well. Let's see what Wiegelson can do. Trying to wait for assistance. It's Flyer Kunga for Dominoiti. Back for Flyer Kunga to Wiegelson. The big wrap around a bit too far out. Be able to pull that one off. Puck sent all the way back down. Havu will recover. And first goal. Oh, so important. We saw in game four. For our previous matchup covered on this broadcast, Sawo scoring in the first period with a deflection goal. That held up as the only goal of the game. Might have been, I, I think, our first shutouts. Uh, one of the first, if not, then uh, uh, that we have seen here in the playoffs. Again, very difficult to do. Uh, in such a high pressure situation. Here comes Playmaker, loses it to Wiegelson, and he tripped him. I thought so. It looked like it was a hit, but it is a trip. Playmaker going to the box. Power play here for Havu Gaming. This is a big opportunity for them. They haven't really been able to generate a whole ton of opportunities. They had that one where they looked like they got the down low cycle started, but that rap chance went back to, you know, for Linda taking it back the other way. This is huge for them to establish themselves and perhaps even get that early marker to take the lead. And off the tie-up, that puck like a rocket back to the neutral zone. Abu will have to uh, regain the zone here. A little bit of trouble. Let's see now. Nine minutes to play here in the first. Still looking for that opening goal. Puck dumped in by Dominoiti. And uh, I was going to say handled by Wiggleson. Just a tough bounce. Abu not able to get much going here in the first minute of this power play. No, it can be so difficult to regain that line. That's why the faceoff is so important. Once that first clear happens, it can be so difficult. Also, Stelia for Villacoon back again. One timer from Dominoiti. Big save. Here we got 15 seconds now. Another shot from Dominoiti. That one blocked. Potflop trying to hold on to it. Can he do it? The answer is no. And it will be back to five on five here. Here is Playmaker. Good pass for Eki. Eki. On the back, wanted that wrap around again. Makes me wonder, it's something that we didn't ask Eki, whether or not he would uh, kind of abandon uh, the net front presence style that he had. To the first little bit of the season, Flyer Kungan nearly sneaking that one past Kape. You know, it said it's one of those things where for these players, unfortunately, I mean, middle of the season, there can be an update, there can be a patch that mm -hmm. changes the effectiveness of some of their strategies. And indeed, we've seen Eki go right back to working behind the goal line quite a bit. We'll see if he uh, chooses to uh, revert back or if it's just a combination, maybe just taking advantage of the circumstances that happen to be in front of him on any given play as Playmaker. Nowhere to go along the half wall. Havu had a steam down the other way, but mistimed, and they're offside. Yeah, a bit of a back and forth affair. I would see neither team really able to get any particularly dangerous chances or any really sequence of chances. We've seen, obviously, the couple rap plays coming out from Eki, but no follow-up opportunities. The bounces just haven't been there. Both teams defending well and uh, breaking it out with uh, relative ease. That puck sent in. Here's Wiggleson pass in front, broken up. Loimu, outlet pass for Eki. Playmaker there again. Great protection from Playmaker. Back for Eki. There, poke check there by Flyer Kungan. Still looking for the opening goal of this game. Nasa Stelia between the legs opens up a little bit of space for Dominoite. Good battle for the puck. And it will be Habu's back in the neutral zone one more time. And the break-ins at times proven to be difficult. We've seen the uh, battle of the blue lines between these two teams on numerous occasions. Both, though, looking to maybe open up a little bit more and get the offensive chances playing to win instead of playing not to lose. Final seven seconds. Can Habu get anything going or will they kill the clock? They have two to work with. Wiggleson nowhere to go. And Sin, that will do it for the opening period. Chances for both sides, but a, a pretty uh, pretty darn good start, for lack of a better term, for Forlunda putting that pressure on.
Yeah, I'd say they got maybe a bit more of the pressure than Havu did, but what Havu did so well is they didn't allow them to follow up with it. They got the initial cycle, maybe an initial change, and then immediately Havu would be able to break that out. They, unfortunately, themselves couldn't establish much in the opposite uh, direction either, and I think the stats kind of show for that. Not a ton of time or time and attack for either side, not a ton of registered shots either. Again, sometimes with the higher level teams, being so good at what they do with the H Reds, the Habus, the Ferlundas, they will have the less shot, but still be able to put up, you know, three, four goals and things like that. And they haven't found that quite yet. So I think, you know, to your point, it might come down to which team is gonna open things up a little bit more. And yeah, looking back on that uh that play uh of <laughs> the, the trip from Pleamaker, I think this was also pointed out in chat. It was by Nikki Dangles. I think he was trying to self-sauce right there, which led to the poke. And then uh the hit as well, which is probably why um, you know, it, or the penalty, I should say, which is probably why it kind of looked like a hit. He was just so close to him. The dangers uh, of some of those moves <laughs> when you have buttons that, uh, you know, uh, multiple purposes, one of which is dangerous more for the defensive side of things. It's Havu right back in on the attack here. The early stages of the second. Commentator's curse is alive because here comes Fralunda. Fleamaker takes the hit. Eki's there, and it doesn't find a way in. Great That's tracking. Decided. That was Hans Salina there tracking that puck. It was moving so fast laterally, he just stuck with it. It is Tamu now. I say now Sustelio was kind of leading the rush down the other way. Kind of been the story for Habu. Difficult at times to gain possession. Eki shot, save, rebound was there. Villikun did a good positioning there to take that one away. And Habu trying to get something going. Great job there by Playmaker. Break that one up. Loimu will dump it in. Covered for the moment for Havu. Good pressure from Frolunda. Here's Potsloff. One timer again blocked. This time by his own man in front. It was Eki. Couldn't get a piece of that one. Still battling for it. Eki trying to hold on to it. Wiegelson able to take that one away for Havu. That shot rebound. Dominoiti was there. Just a little bit beyond it. Playmakers pass off the mark. Again, first goal in this matchup. Going to be oh so important. Will completely change at least presumably change the strategy of both teams. One goal could certainly be enough to win it. Dominoiti bumped off the puck. And a lot of Havu's chances in coming off of quick counterattacks, whereas Philadelphia, or I was going to say the former Philadelphia, of course, in <laughs> Forlunda. Uh, I think that's the first time I made that mistake this season. You know, I'm kind of proud has, of myself yeah. for that. Uh, well, <laughs> and when you get this matchup again, it's easy to fall back into old habits, two on one. Dominoiti just couldn't hold on to the handle. Well, for Havu, at least, it's easy to remember the name. Yeah. <laughs> As that shot blocked down. And Playmaker, nowhere to go. That one poked back into the Frolunda defensive zone. Excellent back check from Pats, uh, from Potsloff off of that. Attempted two-on-one. Looked like they may have had the space, but it was his back check that broke it up. Puck towards the side of goal. Eagleson able to recover that one. Again, Havu back down the other way. Knocked off the puck was Villikun. Not, again, still not that much sustained pressure for Havu here in this second period. Just trying to get the goals off of those quick counterattacks, but an icing will get them a good opportunity here. Yeah, big chance for uh, Dominoiti uh, to win this draw. Establish some zone time for Havu, which is at a premium in this matchup between these two teams. They just simply can't get the follow-up opportunities off loose pox. They lose the draw there, and here comes Ferlunda. Good job there by Villikun to take that one away. And again, Flyer Kungan looking for space. Nowhere to go. Great shutdown defense by Tamu, And he gets the outlet pass. And a trip is going to be called there. Prolunda to the power play. Didn't see who it was. And it is uh, going to be Wiegelson to the box. And this is a huge opportunity. The second rated power play in the regular season that Frelunda has. And they haven't gotten a power play goal so far in this match. I'm not too sure if they've had too many opportunities, but here's one right here. Off the draw. Frelunda in control. Let's see what they can do. Eki down low for Potsla. Now it's Playmaker trying to get it back, and they score! Picture perfect execution. Frolunda strike first on the power play. It's Potsla. I mean, that is just absolutely unreal. The pass from Playmaker right there. I mean, Chef's kiss, near perfect. That that, that shouldn't have been able to happen. I, I thought he might have turned that puck over, but he did such a good job of protecting the puck, 
and maintaining the passing lane so that when he sent it over, it was a near tap-in for Potsloff for Lunda. Make Havu pay with their power play and have that lead here with about five minutes left in the second. The big opening goal there for Falunda. All it took was one mistake for Havu on that penalty. And Falunda make them pay second best power play in the regular season. So it's not all that surprising. Let's see how Havu respond. That's what the playoffs have been all about, the response. Can you get that quick response? What strategies do you employ from there? It's Playmaker. That shot blocked down. Playmaker absolutely decked. Havu with a temporary man advantage. Can they take advantage? Twiggleson in the corner battling with Potsloff, who handles it well. And for Lunda again, survive the scare. Down to a minute and a half to play here. In the period, Potsloff on the doorstep, but his back facing goal. Couldn't quite do much in that situation. And now final minute here of the period. That pass a little bit off the mark. Havu maybe one more chance to capitalize here before the end of the second. Five seconds to go. Loimu trying to hold on to it. Nasistelia has it. DDD one-timer blocked by his own man. And that will do it for the opening. 40 minutes of play. Second period done. And here it is one more time, Sin. The opening goal of the game from Potslop on the power play. And just once again, what a pass coming from Playmaker right there. Just a thing of beauty, really. And that's what that, uh, you know, that sort of man advantage can do for you. Open up just a little bit of space that you need. Havu, a great, great team at taking away some space. And, you know, when you have that man advantage, you just, you're able to find it that much easier. And Playmaker did exactly that. I like the pushback from Havu there at the end of the period. But at the end of the two, they only have those two registered shots while Falunda has the five. But... I mean, with some of those attempts at the end, I think it was um, might have, yeah, as you said, hit off the Havu's man, but Tebu was also there looking at the shot block, and that was a great opportunity. That was Villikun, who we talked about in the pregame, one of those big, big scoring threats from the blue line, and you saw why with just how hard that shot came in, and there was still time left, so it's a good pushback from Havu, trying to get that late opportunity. And they are still only down by one. There is the chance, but in this third period, they're going to be running out of time. For Linda, one of the one of those really, really good teams at being able to put a team away because they just never let their foot off the gas. One goal could certainly be enough, but they're in search of a second. Great job by the defense to take that one away. Havu now in desperate need of a tying goal again. Otherwise, they face a three to nothing deficit. There is no guarantee that we will see Habu in action tomorrow. Of course, again, it could be a sweep. We have seen one sweep so far. Defending champions in H-Reds. As, uh, what a close call there for Domino. Yeah. That's a heartbreaker. So that was maybe the best chance of the game. That absolutely was. And that was him you know, vying for his first point of this series as well. It's not often. We said in the pregame that this guy goes pointless over a stretch of a couple games. 58 points in the regular season for Domino I mentioned, still looking for his first of the series. Nearly had one there on the one-timer from Nostalgia. It was intercepted by his own man. Good job there by Viliku to recover the puck. So far, to the first four minutes, not the largest sample size, but Havu certainly looking to push forward here. Here's Vilikun shot and paddled away by Kape. Loose puck, Vilikun. Recovers again, Nostalgia has options. Rifles it down low. Loimu's there to pick it off. Wiegelson wins it back. Domino-Inti's pass back, struggling there on the short side post. It is Wiegelson coming back with it. No room to cut to the front of the goal. Tamu will dump that one into the far side. See how much pressure Verlinda puts on. The answer, not much. Looks like Flyer Coogan might have wanted that quick outlet pass. Didn't get it. What a poke right there for Pleamaker. All <laughs> Great poke by Eki there as well, but Pleamaker poked the loose puck, almost got the step to recover and start the uh, forecheck for his team. Jump to the far side. Quick pass from Loimu. Eki bringing it down the other way. Good pressure there from Havu, but this is simply not what they need. Just trading chances back and forth, at least defensive chances for lack of a better term, just to show off how defensively solid they are. Neither offense Able to get much going here. Here's the Snasu Stelia, though. Down low in the corner, the defenseman. Round the back for Captain Flyer Coogan. Now Billy Coon at the point. Nasu Stelia fakes that slap shot to reset. Wiegelson for Flyer Coogan. Poked away. Loose puck. Wiegelson draws the trip. 
One timer and a swing and a miss from Dominoiti. Still has it. Nasustelia, one timer. Great block by Pleamaker. Poke check to keep it alive. And finally, for Lund to get a touch on it, power play for Havu and arguably their biggest power play of the season. It's going to be Eki going to the box. And initially, I thought it was the guy who went down in that L1 right there, but it is Eki going to the box. And that's what some extended zone time can do. Havu was doing a great job of working it around. Even with the, uh, the delayed penalty, too, they're really putting the pressure on. But now they have a chance on the power play. Here's Flyer Kungan didn't get anything on that wrist shot. That's going to be frustrating for him. Down low for Wiegelson, and again, now the captain of the point. One more time down low, the shot save. Cape trying to find that rebound. Loose puck still bouncing around, and now off to the half wall, and a trip is called. A little bit too aggressive to try to keep the puck alive. I mean, I can, uh, I can, I... I, know, so I look at that play and obviously it's easy for me to be like, hey, I'm kind of surprised he didn't go for the board play there. It was a risky move and unfortunately Flyer Coogan, you know, pays for it. Uh, it's easy enough though to see the mistakes when you're not in the heat of the moment. Yeah, you know, it's you know definitely one of the better guys on with, with the defensive skill stick. But yeah, in that situation, unfortunately, just can't keep it wide enough of the feet. One of those, uh, who am I to say what uh, a player of his caliber did wrong? What a poke check that was. <laughs> Can we get a... Uh... Can we, can we uh, have him take a test after this game? <laughs> yeah, please. Uh, check that stick out, man. It might be corked. Mm. 15 seconds to go, a four on four before a for Lunda abbreviated power play. They are offside here, though, with 6.24 to play in regulation. Again, Havu right now is staring down the barrel of a three to nothing deficit. They would be one of three. Actually, really, technically, we could have had a three to nothing series in all four of our matchups. Of course, two teams so far able to stave off elimination in Game 4. Goons, the lone team to not be able to do that against our defending champions and number one seed, H-Reds, as just two seconds of power play time left. We are back to five on five. There's the quick outlet to Flyer Coogan. The puck is rolling. He finally gets to it. Billy Coon back down to him. The shot in Dominoit. The guy elected not to try to deflect it. Another shot, and that one again doesn't go. Dominoit down low. Havu. Willing to throw that puck on a little bit more. They didn't have too many shots on target through the first 40 minutes. Dominoiti being hounded by the defense of Frolunda. Here's Vili Kuhn. Wiegelson tried to pass out of there. Nowhere to go. Great pressure here, though, from Habu. Their best bit of sustained pressure. But again, Dominoiti. If I, I never thought I'd see a Dominoiti player build change. But boy, is it just not working out for him here in this game right now. Puck down low. Potzloff trying to hold on to it. Eki down there as well. Battling with Nasustelia. Goes to Wiegelson. Pleamaker takes it away, but only momentarily. As soon we approach the last minute, let's see if Havu can pull this off and force overtime for Lunda, though. As you said, one of the best at shutting things down. Wiegelson in the corner. Flyer Kungen to the point. Nasustelia has to hand off to Vili Kuhn. One timer rebound scores! Dominoiti ties it with 43 seconds to go. You kind of felt like it would come eventually for him. He's been putting it together. He's had so many chances in this. He's been so, so close a number of times. Simply wasn't going in. He fanned on a one-timer earlier, which was a great location. That time, they do what they do best. Flyer Coogan loves to shoot from that location. We saw him do it just a little while ago. That time, they get the favorable bounce off the rebound. Dominointi cleans it up and they have tied this game. What a bit of pressure coming out from Havu there. That four check was monstrous, and you kind of wonder why they didn't break that out maybe a little bit earlier in the game. A huge moment there. We had uh, called out Dominoiti all game long. It finally works out. We're tied at one. Next goal will win this, but will it take overtime? We've seen some late winners between these two teams before. Potsloff still fighting for it. Shot denied by Han Salino. Playmaker for Eki. Sin! An own goal with 16 seconds to go. Heartbreak for Habu. Oh no, that not like this. We're going to see a timeout being taken and we're going to have to see that replay as well. That is unfortunate. I think it was either poked or, or no, I think Eki was trying to just move it towards move it towards the net with a pass. As you can see, it went down low or that was just yeah. That was just him like picking up the puck and getting hit. 
uh, very fortuitous for Fralunda. And if you're a Havu, that stings. And there's really no other way to put it. 16 seconds to go. Eki is credited with the goal. It might not have been an own goal. I mean, it might have gone off of Han Salino because of the credited assists. Here's Dominoiti. Havu not quite done. Extra attacker out. One timer just wide. And indeed, that will do it for game number three. For Lunda, take a dominant three to nothing series lead here in this opening round matchup. Oh man, that's that's that rough. Hurts. That really hurts. Havu had all the momentum at the end there. The end. You, you got to feel for in that situation. They got the game time goal. They're, 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 their forecheck was just so strong. It was just so strong in that third period, and that was just really um, hemming for Lunda in, and really they couldn't break it out. We, we saw all game, both these teams really having no issues breaking it out, and it kind of turned into you know some of the neutral zone gameplay as we saw, and teams really having to capitalize on the chances at the end there. Havu was all over for Lunda, and unfortunately it comes down to a bounce. We've said that so often. We were saying it about Sabo. You can't rely on just scoring one goal because you never know when a bounce is about to happen. Fortunately for Havu, that bounce happened at about the worst possible time as that was kind of a bump pass that went towards a slot and hit off some sticks and eventually, I think, hit off a Han Salino skate and was into the back of the net. I don't know if we've ever seen a goalie have as bad a luck as Han Salino's had through the first three games of the series. I, I genuinely cannot, <laughs> genuinely cannot believe uh, unfortunately for him, just the low quality of goals that uh, have found their way past him. It is, it's brutal. Uh, you know, we talked about the, the mental side here for Havu. How difficult it's going to be. I mean, you look at that right there. It's just how that one even finds a way through. Like, there's nothing Han Salino can do there. Just how difficult it's going to be to just kind of stay composed and to not just want to be like, yeah, I'm going to put this game down for a couple of weeks, you know? Yeah, yeah. And uh, <laughs> it's it can be tough, but, you know, these pro players, they've, they've gone through the swings of it. They've been in situations like this before. You know, at the end of the day, you have to reset it. doesn't matter what happens in the last game. You still have a job to do, and that's where Avu find themselves right now. Uh, yeah, it looks like it went off of Hanselino's goal stick. Yeah. And into the net. Yeah, you, you got to hope for an animation right there. And never a situation you want to be in to, to sort of rely on on that. But, you know, it is what it is at the end of the day. Uh, they still only scored that one goal in that game. And as close as it was, as big as that goal looks, they still were only able to muster that one goal against just for Linda team. That four check that we saw in the third period, they're going to have to make that a bigger press. They have to at this point. It's must win. Every game here is a must win from here on out. That four check has to be a part of their game from puck drop it uh, it really does it's one of those things where i'm sure the defense is oh well if you have the goalie hugging the post in the reverse uh you know in the reverse it wouldn't have happened because the stick wouldn't have been there those tactics aren't all that useful which is yeah. why you don't see goalie use them so the tools are in the game but it's almost a detriment for a goaltender to use the tool because it's just too difficult to recover depending on the common you know opportunities that teams look for it, it's just it's brutal it's brutal mm. that's the only thing i can say it is uh, obviously very difficult to be a goaltender uh at the highest level here uh and again very intrigued to see what happens heading into this fourth game of this series we will have it for you right here we'll set the stage for you after a quick word from our sponsors don't go anywhere minkä päällä lakukastiken maistuu parhaalta Ei voi tietää, ellei kokeile. Kouvolan lakritsi. Lähdetään haastamaan yhdellä yhtä vastaan. Loistava nälkäisen pelaajan ratkaisu. Oi mennään. Huukula ollaan valmiina. Ja sitten katsotaan. Kaikki kestää. Vanhanaikaisella. Kiekko lapaa. Ilma veivi. Klassikko. Maali. Wilhelm vei todella komeasti. Nakki kioskille. Wernerin nakki on loistava vahvistus Wilhelm joukkueelle. All right, everybody, again, thank you very much for sticking with us. A big shout-out to our sponsors at Wilhelm, Kovalan Lakritsi, and ST Hockey. Soon, one of these days, we'll, uh, you know, we'll get to bring mm -hmm. these over there and uh, finally I want the smoky hand. bites. I, I just want <laughs> smoky bites. 
Oh, how how we, how we wish, how we yeah. wish things were a little bit different. It might have been sooner rather than later, but hopefully, hopefully later on this year. How great would that be? With that, I mean, again, I believe we have an updated look at the bracket here to set the stage for you guys. Again, uh, heading into today, we did not have uh, action guaranteed for tomorrow. Again, H Reds with that sweep. If every single series had ended in a sweep. There would be no games on Thursday. It wouldn't be required. However, we know tomorrow, at the very least, Game 5, Sawo and Granite, Fairstad and IQ. We will have coverage of the conclusion of those two series. But Sin for Havu, there is no guarantee that we will see them in action tomorrow. This upcoming game is the last one that they are guaranteed this season. And they are going to have to pull off, arguably, I mean, granted, it's not in a championship form, but one of, if not the greatest comebacks we've ever seen. Yeah, and you know what? The good news is it just starts with one one today. All you need to do is win this next game. You could take a breather, and then you come back tomorrow sort of rejuvenated. Yes, you still have a tough task ahead of you, but, you know, it's it might, might be a little bit easier to sort of split it across two games. Who knows? Sometimes you want to keep that momentum going, but yeah, if you're Havu, play, play this nearly the entire game. I'll, I'll say at least the second period on, like you played that third period. And they were playing like a team who, on fire who were desperate and all, seemingly nothing to lose. They were still able to get back, maybe not play that complete controlled style defensively, but they have a great team and a great defensive squad. I think you got to trust that and you got to trust Han Salino as well and go for broke. Start getting that four check on there. Make sure Ferlunda doesn't have a comfortable time breaking that puck out of their zone because you have two of arguably two of the best four checking wingers on your roster in, in Weagleson and Flyer Kugan, Flyer Kugan especially. And we saw him especially towards the end there be an absolute menace. It did cost him, you know, taking a penalty there, of course, at one point, but it's, this is, this is a very, very scary team. And when they want to be, when they want to crank up that aggression, that's when I think they've been at their best this season. And yeah. it's sort of breaking their old habits of being that system team. But it's good to see them, as we've seen this season, breaking out of that system team, being willing to stretch the game out, being willing to get aggressive. And it helps them get close. So I'd like to see a more complete game with that style here because same situation as last game. You know, you're going to lose if you don't do it. So it's it's a stunning situation certainly again as we mentioned this has been a championship matchup on numerous different occasions mm -hmm. uh of course over the past two years we've seen a Frolunda and h reds final uh both teams winning uh via sweep over the last couple of years as crazy as that is again it was h reds in season 12 or ecl 12 uh and for Lunda in ecl 11 and as crazy as it is and from when we started here a couple of years ago now, you know, again, it was, oh, it's always going to be, uh, yeah. you know, uh, this Fralunda team against Havu. And again, Havu, it's one of those things. They haven't been in the finals since uh, season 10. Again, technically, this would be ECL 13 if it wasn't for the rebranding. Uh, it, it's been a little bit. They did win in seven games uh, over uh, Fralunda at that point. It's it's a tough tough road back uh, yeah. right now from from where they are and I just wonder do they have uh, enough left in the tank to pull off uh, I would have to call it the the greatest comeback of all time at this point I mean I'm looking back and uh, I would agree with the gravity of the situation between these two teams with the history between these two teams. We've seen it get close with like, you know, winning three straight, but then dropping that game seven. And I think the closest we ever came was that three to one series lead with, you know, the other team winning four straight to win the championship. But uh, yeah, yeah. So I'm looking back at ECL 10. Havu was up three to nothing for Lunda forced game seven, only to lose yeah, in overtime. And that was Havu's last championship was ECL 10. Again, though, for Lunda continuing to go to the finals while Havu almost, in a sense, being replaced at the top of the mountain by h -Reds. But you know uh, they're not going to give up that spot. They're not going to go down without a fight at the very least. It is game number four. Havu in the black and green. Their home unis hoping to earn their way into tomorrow's broadcast. And again, no matter what happens tomorrow, we will see the conclusion of this opening round, no matter how many games it takes. Again, two series with a 3-1 to one score line already guaranteed to be featured tomorrow. H-Reds awaiting the winner of a series and might just be Falunda as well, waiting for a winner of another 
Series. We shall see, of course, we are potentially on a, another collision course between Atrets and Frolunda. That matchup is possible, but it is the first period here. Very much intrigued to see how this one goes down as uh, we will have an offside call there with Fleamaker touching up that puck. So, Sin, needless to say, first goal matters uh, that much more here in this Absolutely. Game. And we're seeing a bit more fire coming out from Havu early on. They don't want to just sit back. They're a bit, you know, not overly aggressive on the forecheck yet, but you can definitely see they're a bit hungrier for those bucks, and that's what they absolutely have to be. You said this first goal is going to matter that much more. Absolutely in this one. Havu have got to be gunning for that. They want to be the team to set the tone right there. And unfortunately, they can't hit the high glass on the dump and chase. So we'll have to reset in the neutral zone with a face-off. And face-offs here, crucial as well. I mean, again, we, we've talked about it. These two are both uh, fantastic at winning face-offs, but against one another, it's a complete toss-up. When you have two dominant centers going head-to-head. -head. Especially when they've been playing against each other for so long, you kind of already, you know, sort of know the other guy's tendencies there. I, yeah, that's, that's certainly another factor, right? Like, as opposed to, like, oh, it's it's Dominoite as a, a dominant center against uh, someone like Zhergord, and, like, you might struggle just because of the unfamiliarity, but then you get into talking about just how many series <laughs> some of these guys have played, how many games some of these guys have played against one another, and then it just gets to be outrageous in terms of that mental chess match on the draw. Yes. We are already sitting halfway through this first period. This has been a crazy pace. Yeah, Havu... A little bit of issues trying to clear the puck out. And Ferlundo's getting a bit of pushback there, but now they're able to get it in. And here's Villicoon. Ooh, good sauce into the middle. Still fighting for it. Dominoiti and Wigglesen on the doorstep. Numbers here, perhaps, for Ferlunda. Eki on the back end. Has the circle and again gets it down low for Loimu. Pass in front. Great reach for Villicoon to take that one away. Ferlunda very much looking for those rocket passes. And send, again, as much as we can sit here and be like, hey, just try to throw shots on. You never know. At the same time, we saw in that first game as to why teams just try those rocket passes in mm -hmm. front. You never know. I hate to say it. If the puck's going to go through a skate or a stick blade or it's somehow, some way, it'll find its way to someone that it really shouldn't. Yeah, that's, you know, exactly kind of the case here. And that that's why, you you know, you, you always got to test the middle. You can clog it up as much as you can. But, yeah, sometimes passes go through even if you're slightly off or sometimes if you're there. So, yeah, always got to test the waters. And that's why you see people taking those tough angle shots as well. Test the waters. Test that goaltender's position. Sometimes you just pick a corner. See what Habo can do here. Just about five minutes to go now in this first period. Dominoiti. We got that one to Flyer Kungan. Nowhere to go. He gets absolutely decked. The risky step up there. Opens up space. Here comes Potsloff, and it's just wide on the far side. Major pile up there after the flying poke check from Hanselina. Taking matters into his own hands rather than trying to rely on a save animation, and I can't say I blame him. It is Nasser Stelia. Unfortunately, Wiegelson was ahead of him expecting the pass offside call here against Havan. We've seen a couple of those mostly on the side of Frelunde here, but I mean, Havu, their, their pushback is good here, but they really got to find the scoring. You know, they haven't been able uh, to do that quite yet in this series. They got to just have a game where they try to break open the floodgates. Again, tough to do against a team like Frelunde here, but with the way they played that third period, you know, maybe it, it, this game is the game if they could just get that first one. See what happens here on the rush now. Dominoiti nowhere to go. He does win it back. The pass to Wiegelson broken by the shot block in front. Still no now. It is Wiegelson. See what they can do. Dominoiti around the back of the net. That pass through the slot, through the crease even. And all the way back down. Might leave Habu with a chance. We'll see if they see the slap shot. There it is. And uh, icing with 0.7 go, not enough time for Ferlinda to capitalize. So, Sin, that will bring us to the end of the first period. Decent start for both teams, but not able to find their breakthrough. Yeah, it's, you know, it, it's a bit of a victory for Havu to not surrender that goal. But, you know, with, with, they, with the way they came out, with the way they wanted to play, they wanted to open up the scoring here now. And I think in the second period, they're going to have to get even more aggressive again. For Lunda has all the advantages in the series. It's really Havu who have to kind of press the issue here. Yes, in this game it's tied, but with the you know the way they've been struggling to score, with the way for Lunda's you know being able to to sort of bounce back as we saw in that last game quickly. I don't know if we've seen that in a while. Zero registered shots from either team in that first period. Again, we saw some attempts, a lot of blocks, but yeah, for the most part, 
kind of picking up where we left off, sort of a feeling out process, and the time on attack was even lower, so very much a neutral zone battle there, as we saw several offsides happening as well, so I'm going to say it as I said in the pregame, now's the time for Havu to crank that aggression back up with that four check, you know, try be as careful as you can to not overextend, but you're gonna have to take some risks here. It's time for Hava to be doing what did what they've been doing in the regular season as the adjustment is to start taking those risks, start trying to force the issue, not rely on the system. Second period underway here again, ECL Elite Division action, the quarterfinals of the spring season playoffs as Cafe makes an early stop there. How's that to uh, change the shot on goal number? Again, Elite Division action brought to you by our friends at Wilhelm. A couple of lot could see an SD hockey and a big face-off coming up here for Havu. Face-offs quite even at this stage. Loose puck kept in. Here's Havu again. A shot on from Flyer Kungum was blocked. Still battling, though, for the puck with Eki. Chance now Tom Anointi immediately has three members of Verlunda just close in on him. Nowhere to go. Playmaker the move. Eki just couldn't get that pickup. Has the puck now, though. Down low for Potzla. They make it to the point for Taman. Slap shot, great block by Flyer Kungan, but for Linda still have it. Puck again down low, it's Potzla in front, all the way to the point actually, and a puck didn't find its way through the traffic off of that shot. For Linda, really picking up the heat here after the early chances from Havu. Again, Sin, it's one of those things, are you playing to win or are you playing not to lose? Yeah, it's definitely uh, sort of the question that uh, can be raised at times in these high state games and teams as uh, familiar with each other as as these two can definitely sort of turn into that. You're so you kind of know what they want to do. You're trying to prevent that as well. And so you know, but now's the time, I think, especially for Habu to try to, you know, take it to for Linda, get their chances. We saw that, you know, initial one. Right there's Nostelli. You got to be careful with that uh, stick positioning. He does turn it over. It's Eki. He was all over him, too. Back now for Loimo. Across, blocked, rebound alive. Dominoiti handles it for the moment. Still bouncing around. Wiegelson is able to clear it just enough that Loimo couldn't maintain zone pressure. Yeah, that could have been pretty scary right there for Lynn to force the turnover. And we're being able to, you know, starting to get some chances there. And this is the time in the second period where the, these goals are going to get that much more important, that much more dangerous. These two teams incredibly evenly matched. And about halfway through the game now, this first goal, I'd say even more important. Every game, uh, pretty much at least every game we've ever seen these teams play in have been incredibly close, incredibly competitive to the surprise, I would say, of absolutely nobody in the scene. They are still two of the best, even if, again, as we reach the midway point of the second period, even if, again, we you know we talked about it in the pregame, just, you know, there's starting to be a little bit of a finals appearance drought for Havu. Uh, threatening now to be the third season that they failed to make it to the finals after winning the championship in season 10. Let's see what they can do here, though. Again, we know they're not going to go down without a fight. It's been a very competitive game so far. Either team make a mistake, that could be it. That one poked. As Wiggleson dropping off for Flyer Kung goes to the far side for Nasistelia. He'll dump it right back to the right. Good lateral movement here. For Havu, unfortunately, they couldn't get the bounce. Dominoiti trying to win it back from Potsloff. Great patience on display. And the center in there. Plea maker for Eki over for Potsloff. Tried to go back to Eki. Puck bouncing around. So you know, down in the butterfly. His team able to find possession. And they can do again. Now Sestelio sweeping to the forehand. Eagleson now. Flyer Kungan in double team pressure. Can't come up with it. Nervous moments. For Havu Gaming here, trailing three to nothing. Round number one, again, a sixth place finish in the regular season. What a step up by Billy Coombe. Pass in front, and again, Dominoiti's guy couldn't get it to his stick. It's off of the skates. Tough, tough break there. Here's Playmaker, though. Bit of space now. See what he can do off the back. Skating tried to maintain possession. Flyer Coogan bumped him off the puck. His pass, though, a bit off the mark. Now Sestelia having trouble holding on to it. Wiegelson tried to drop back. It was Loimu of all people, the defender who was the furthest uh, towards the Havu end out of the five for Linda Skaters on the ice. Potzloff to Playmaker, back to the point. Temu shot, way too much traffic. Great block by Flyer Kungen. 150 to go here in the second period. Dominoiti had the lone goal for Havu in game number three. 
and not able to find much zone pressure. Flyer Kungan trying to walk it in. Wigelson's there with them. Dominoiti, a risky play, nearly own goal. Dominoiti, final 20 seconds. Flyer Kungan, don't think that's where he meant for that pass to go. I can safely say that. Three seconds, Nasustelia will kill the clock. We go to the third period, Sin, still without the opening goal of this game. And that was pretty similar uh, to an end of the period uh, situation that we saw. I'm not sure if it was last period or last game. The two teams are playing uh, so close together. They're kind of blending together. Uh, but they kind of had a play from behind the net where they tried to pass it up front and trickled all the way back into the other end to kill the period. Same sort of situation right there. So Genhavu, once they get that puck down low, they want those in tight passes. But I'd say for both of these teams, almost over caution still zero registered shots for for linda credit to Havu, who's doing a good job of the second they try to get even close to the middle from the perimeter whether they're l skating they recognize the situation they bump them off the puck they try to get that down you know towards the middle there's sticks there there's people there there's people in the shot lanes as well i think you know if if for linda's gonna take uh, some shots if there's ever a time to start firing them at the net i'd say this third period is it we saw a shot attempt from the point but it was after he held on to it for a bit too long, thinking of doing something else. It's about, I think we need a little bit more uh, deliberateness on that in in the shot uh, shooting locations uh, for Fralinda here. But third period, we'll see what happens. This is it. The final 20 minutes guaranteed to Havu in our winter season of ECL 22. Can they hold on to see tomorrow? Literally, uh, we will see the conclusion of the series tomorrow if they were to get a win here. A good save by Cape again in the early stages of the period. And for Havu. So tough when uh, for Lunder are on their game. Flyer Kungan around. Wigelson was on the doorstep. Just not able to find its way to the back of the net. Here's Pleamaker now. Down low for Reki. That pass to Potsloff off the mark. Trouble though for Nasustelia. Potsloff again not able to hold on to it. The team's trading possession. And that one extra mistake can be enough to open up the space. Havu, safe to say, need this next goal as Dominoiti tried to get it in front. Here's Wigelson, saved by Cape. Still fighting for it now. Wigelson again has it, tried to throw it on net a little bit wide. Dominoiti to the point, again back down to him. Let's see what Billy Kuhn can do, fakes that slap shot. Trying to open up space, has options. Dominoiti shot, save again by Cape. Now uh, Sistelia with a good keep. Wigelson nowhere to go, and the puck back to the neutral zone. We're starting to see it from Havu, that aggression coming out on the forecheck. That gave him some sustained pressure here. They're going to try to, you know, keep it going, keep the momentum going on this zone possession. Wigelson has it down low, back to the point. Now Sistelia, Wigelson, loose puck, scores! Dominoiti finds the breakthrough. Havu strike first here, just about midway through the third period. Exactly what they've needed to do in this one, and that's crank up that aggression to get that opening goal. Dominoiti once again getting a huge goal for his team in tight. They're just going to put that puck to the net, and Dominoiti cleans it up. 1 0 for Havu here. 11 23 in the third, and now for Lunda, who. I still don't think have registered a shot on net. Now it's their turn to start turning it on, getting more aggressive and maybe a bit of desperation here as well. A huge moment to say the least. We are halfway through this period. Eki's pass a little bit off the mark. Huge moment now for Hava. The question is, can they maintain the lead? Their season's on the line, an offside call with 9.31 to play here in the third period of game number four. I think it's got to be more than just, you know, survival here in this sense. At least in this game for Havu, they need to go for another goal. But what if, if, if last game is, you know, any evidence whatsoever, you never know when a bounce is coming. So if you're Havu here, I think you've got to stay hungry, hungry, keep your foot on the gas. Yes, there, really good. Dominoiti, the shot from an odd angle. Juicy rebound. It was Loimu who was able to find it, though. So I've been watching too much AW lately. A big fan of Johnny Hungry. That's right, it's snuck through. I heard you. If you don't get the oh. reference, we'll talk yeah. after the stream. <laughs> <laughs> I know one person in that. <laughs> there we go. Here's Playmaker now. Just over six and a half minutes to play. Let's see what they can do. 
Rolanda need this tying goal if they want tomorrow off. That deflection picked up by Villacoon. Loose puck. Leemaker was in the area. And now it is Dominoite. He is really heated up today after a slow start yesterday. Rebound for Wiggleson after the shot from Flyer Kungen. Kape able to stand tall. Wiggleson tries to go back to the point. Pleamaker was there. Eki can't hold it. Gets it back. And again knocked loose. Four minutes to go for Havu. Can they hold on? A big sauce pass down the other way. And might that be the mistake that comes back to haunt them? Yeah, tried to stretch it out a little bit. Just led him a bit too much. And here's a big offensive zone draw here. No, Yeah, they're going to take the face off. They finally have a registered shot. Nine shots for Havu. Did they ever turn it on here in the third period? That's the reason they're up one to nothing. It's time for Ferlunda to do the same. But it might be tough. You're kind of, you know, going from where you're just playing it's tough to sometimes find that extra gear when you're kind of we're caught almost in the lull throughout the entirety of the first two periods and now you're in desperation time we're gonna see the timeout coming out from Fralinda with this offensive zone draw this is their opportunity to establish something and get the chance they need to tie this game up see what happens here again gigantic moments for Havu Gaming fair to say I mean granted there's luck involved in this game at its at its base level, but Havu have had some bad luck through the first three games of this series. They have two and a half to go to see game five tomorrow. Fleamaker tried to go in front to Eki, loose puck. Billy Coon's there. Sends it all the way down. Should be an icing call. Smart move by Flyer Coon to save up some of that stamina. 135 to play. Another opportunity now. Patsloff lost the last draw. This one he'll be looking to make an adjustment. They're still not changing up their stance. They don't have a... I mean, they probably have plays in mind, but they're not looking for a face-off stance. One timer from the point blocked. Loimu's pass in front doesn't go. Scramble for the puck. It is Habu who have it, at least for the moment. What a fight here. Patsloff holding it now for Furlunda. Loses it. 50 seconds to go. Dominoiti just trying to hold. Patsloff, the shot scores! With 49 to go, Frolunda are on the board. We're tied at one. Dominoiti trying his best to protect the puck. Stay patient until the passing lane sort of opened up and he can move it. But that wasn't allowed. Potsloff and Eki behind the net force the play, force the puck off of his stick. And Potsloff comes around, puts a backhand on in the wraparound, and it finds its way in. We have a tie game here. I don't know how much you can blame. Bad luck for that one. That was just relentless forechecking pressure for, for London to win that puck back. We are tied at one. Havu so close, yet so far to holding on. We are tied. Next goal will win this. It is Flyer Kungan down low in the corner. Goes all the way around. Wiegelson wasn't there. He is now. Options. Tries to find Dominic. Wiegelson shot blocked by Tamu, stretch pass for Playmaker. self sauce to generate speed, shot on, save, rebound nearly, nearly swept in, and Sin, even if it wasn't that close, for how the series has gone for Habu, that was still yeah. too close for comfort. That was a, uh, I will say, stomach clencher right there, that was incredibly scary right there, and now an offense's own face off to boot. Here we go, that shot scores! Playmaker with 18 seconds to go! Frolunda take the lead, it's two to one. Shot from the point. There hasn't been a whole lot of shots from these two teams in this game, perhaps more for Havu. And that time from Frolunda, the biggest one yet. A shot from the point, uh, redirected in by Playmaker. A one goal lead with 18 seconds left. This is their chance to sweep the series and Havu is even more so in desperation mode now. What a swing of momentum. Two goals straight from Fralunda, and now Havu have got to find a miracle. I'm absolutely lost for words here, buddy. Man, that's absolutely stunning. We have 18 seconds to go in game number four. It is Fralunda in possession. Havu had the lead late. They are now trailing. Scores! Unbelievable! Wiegelson ties it with 10 to go! Never say never. Havu didn't. The pinch from Villikun to keep that alive. That kept that play going. What a smart play from him in desperate times. Desperate measures were taken and Wiegelson gets the shot. Beats Kape on the glove hand. 
this game is absolutely not over. And I mean, with 10 seconds left, we have a chance at another one. This is why these two teams earn that title of El Clasico when they go head to head. It's classic after classic. A delayed call though against Habu with 1.3 to go. Cape heads to the bench. A six on four with just enough time. No doubt about that. That was a murder of a hit by a Villicoon. There might still be time here to end this in regulation. What was it? Oh, yeah, 1.3 on the clock. A face-off win could do it. The biggest draw of the season. It's one shot blocker saved by Hanselino. And we go to overtime. How do you like that? Unreal <laughs> final minutes of regulation. Just an absolute swing. These two teams, it's always fireworks. Sometimes it takes a while for those fireworks to light and go off. This time really all the way until the third period. And then, wow, oh wow, just the last minute for Lund to take the lead. Habu come back and tie it eight seconds later, I want to say. Uh, it's, it wow. Eight seconds, yes, yeah, if I'm wow. not mistaken. 18 down to 10. And right when it, it looked done for Havo. <laughs> it did. <laughs> so I was like, oh no, that deflection was, again, great play by Ferlunda. But if you're Havo, it's like, oh man, they just can't buy a break. But uh, it was a great play right there. They got hungry once again. Their four check, pit, you know, really paid off again. That pinch from Billy Kuhn was perfect. Him and Flyer Kungen pressuring that puck carrier. Ferlunda had a chance to control it. Loimu won the race back, tried to feed it to Tamu who then got pressured by two people. He just simply couldn't get it out. That's what led to the goal, but far from out of the woods, Habu have to kill off a penalty here to start off overtime. The first penalty taken from either team in game four, it's win or go home, or in this instance to the home team, stay home for Habu. Potsloff, Aki stepping in, kick stop by Hanselino. Good pressure there though, plea maker, causing havoc as they try to get rid of it, and Wiggleson steps in to clear it out. I think you guys see why, despite it being a 3-0 scoreline, if you followed this series, why this matchup has been a championship matchup in the past. Comes down to these teams being so close that sometimes, again, it's those type of bounces that have to decide it because they're just too evenly matched. As Flyer Kungen clears that one out, we will be back to five on five. A successful kill for Havu Gaming. Again, they need to score this next goal. Here's Potsloff, scores! Frolunda complete the sweep. The captain wins it, or at least the former captain. He handed it to Cape, but he's a leader on the ice. He gets the goal. Frolunda move on. Heartbreak for Havu once more. Potsloff is one of those players when you're, if you're paying too much attention to Eki and Playmaker, he will make you pay. What a pass, and he just takes that with a head of steam up the middle, splits the defense, and on the backhand, sneaks it by Hanselino. Fralunda will sweep their rivals and move on to the second round. Unbelievable, Sid. Absolutely unbelievable. Another class. Only these two could have a classic of a series and have it end up being a sweep, although no disrespect to Hreds and Goons. They had some close matchups as well. Uh, unmatched drama, and it ends once more in favor of Frolunda. Their campaign back to the championship round will continue on, and it's because of this goal right here from Potsloff. Just a beautiful play. Uh, it's maybe kind of power play influence as the man was getting out of the box. They were still sort of adjusting, but not necessarily the power play influence goal that you're used to seeing where it's sustained pressure and then they're able to capitalize on it. It was a transition play fed up the middle to Potsloff and he just powered his way through the middle, got the shot on and beat Hanselino. A rough way for it to end and it it feels feels a little bit bad because between these two teams, I always want it to go to the distance. I'm sure Forlunda is sure glad that it didn't have to go the distance, but I mean, I, I just I want seven games between these two teams all the time. Those games insanely close, despite the result of the sweep, kind of like our finals in the last season, where H Reds, yes, did indeed sweep Forlunda, but three of those goals decided by one or three of those games, excuse me, decided by one goal. As we're getting a look at that uh, first goal coming out. Um, from from Potsloff there, from behind the net, it was he and Eki who pressured the play, and he just kind of worked out front and put it on, and it went through the five hole. And here's that next one. 
a deflection that was yeah. I mean, that deflection, he tapped that through somebody's leg. <laughs> and then maybe through his own, but that looks like it oh might have been going in. I didn't really see it change direction too much. It's hard to say, but either way, ended up being a goal there. And uh, just what a third period that was. What a last minute of the third period. I'm, I'm going to have to kind of call you out a little bit. Uh, you were like, oh, the next goal is going to be the winner. Uh, My yeah. friend, three <laughs> more. Three more were needed to end this game. So uh, uh, just goes to show you this matchup between Frilunda and Havu. You never know what to expect, except that it's going to be amazing. How many times have we ever been able to say the last goal is going to win it? There's 50 seconds left in the game. <laughs> and then there's three more goals. Only them, man. Only them. Outrageous. Three of the four games ending with a one goal differential. Uh, the only game to not. I believe there was an empty netter. Uh, in game number two to make it three to one. That sounds about right to me. I think that was the series with the empty net or maybe not, but regardless, an incredibly close series. Eki said as much in chat. That was not a four nothing series. And so yeah. often it's not. And again, you mentioned the finals last year, H Reds and for Lund, I mean, granted a little bit different, but that series was a little bit closer too than you might expect, at least yeah. in terms of the final score lines. But <sighs> what can you even say to that? That was one of the most outrageous final uh, three to five minutes we have ever seen, if you tack on the overtime, uh, to a game that we have ever seen. And again, it does complete the sweep four for Lunda. A look for you all at the bracket now, heading into the action tomorrow. Again, we will have our now remaining two series being covered. H Reds has moved on. And of course, as we know, for Lunda has moved on as well. Those two teams, the rematch from last year could very well be on a collision course. We will see the conclusion tomorrow of Granite Gaming and Sawo, Faria, Stad, and IQ. Again, both Sawo and IQ winning in game four to secure their spot in tomorrow's broadcast. Again, uh, 1945 CET, the start time for that. That's about 1.45 p.m. Eastern for those of you on the North American side of things as we wait to see who for Lunda and uh, H-Reds will be playing Sin, we didn't really get to talk about it. I mean, for Goons, you know, a strong season, but uh, just, again, kind of victims of the competition level. Uh, Havu, too, finishing in sixth and having to have this matchup. I uh, I wonder where Havu goes from here because I know, I mean, I've, I've seen it. You know, we, we follow the scene. We follow the guys. And I, I know that Flyer Kungan has kind of had those questions in the past of just kind of that frustration of what do we got to do yeah. and... Uh, those questions have to be even more pertinent now after after a season like that where you can tell they are still one of the top teams in the world, but you keep running into the Ferlundas and the H-Reds, and it has to be so frustrating to play so well but have this series end in a sweep. Yeah, I think that's got to be the most frustrating because it, it, it looks, when when you look back at it, it looks bad. I mean, you you brought up Goons and H-Reds right there, and unfortunately they've been that series bit of an afterthought of, after we covered the first two games. You know, we didn't get a chance to follow up, but if you remember in those first two games, I think Goons took both of them to overtime or at least one of them to overtime, and they were both insanely close in those first two games, and that's what that's what Goons kind of does. They're, they're one of those teams as well that always just kind of hangs around. They're always, you know, making it close. And so, yeah, again, some of these series with the way they look, you know, 4-0 finishes, they don't feel like that. And especially that one between Frelona and Havu. And it's yeah. it's rough to have it finish like that because, again, you just keep, want to keep watching them play each other because it's always such a fun matchup and it's ridiculously close at all times. And, you know, respect given and, and received on, on either side. And it's crazy that, that we've come from – perennially casting them in the finals each time to seeing one of them being eliminated in the first round. But, you know, the times change and here in the elite division, the grounds have shifted for Linda lives to fight another day. Habu, unfortunately are going home. Talked about it again. The two sweeps we've seen so far, the game so close that H uh, reds and goons series, every single game decided by one goal. The first three games went to overtime. So again, like Sin said, you look back and you see it's a sweep that doesn't always tell the full story, but regardless, you look at that and then you see like, hey, a Northern Ascendancy took for London to six games a couple of seasons ago. And then you see yeah. that Havu result. And it's like, what happened? That doesn't seem right. And indeed, maybe in a sense, it's not right. But the result is the result for Lunda and H-Reds have both punched their ticket to the semi-final again, all leading up to the championship round. Of course, at the beginning of March, we'll continue to follow along with that. 
But for now, uh, we're done here because what else can be said after uh, the conclusion of, you know, in a series ending like that, Sin and I again will be back here tomorrow, 1945 CET, 1.45 p.m. Eastern to wrap up the opening round again. Uh, those other two series concluding tomorrow. Insanity. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and it's maybe the most difficult uh, time that I've had to wrap up a show but I think we j- we just have to go. So, of course, you mm-hmm. can follow Sin on Twitter, as you see on your screen there, at Sin for the Win Prod. He's on YouTube at Sin for the Win Productions. I am everywhere at Tukey24. Again, we will be back with you tomorrow. This is just the quarterfinals, everybody. We still have two rounds to go. I think that's the best I can say. Have a good rest of your day or your nights, and we'll see you tomorrow. My God. <laughs>